But first, British Prime Minister Liz Truss announced her resignation Thursday, just weeks after she moved into 10 Downing Street. Truss is now the shortest serving prime minister in British history, just 44 days in office. Her tenure was brief, but exciting. Her free market economic agenda was reversed. Her party abandoned her. And things had even been so bad, people began rooting for a head of iceberg lettuce to outlast Truss in office. The lettuce won. Ramey Innocencio reports from London. I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Today, Liz Truss sealed her fate as Britain's shortest serving prime minister in history, just 44 days after the Queen appointed her and two days before the monarch died. In Parliament and in public the past month, Truss's political life imploded. I will deliver a bold plan. The biggest tax cut plan in half a century would have ballooned the deficit. That spooked the markets and sent the pound plunging. She sacked her finance minister, then made a massive U-turn on campaign promises. 20p tax cut, gone. Two-year energy freeze, gone. Tax-free shopping, gone. Economic credibility, gone. Just yesterday, she vowed to carry on. Mr. Speaker, I am a fighter and not a quitter. But today, she did just that, step down. This head of lettuce outlasting the premier in a tabloid stunt streamed online. President Biden thanked Truss. Look, she was a good partner on Russia and Ukraine, and, uh, and the British are going to solve their problems. But Britain's problems, including inflation over 10 percent and at a 40-year high, are not disappearing. This was about people's mortgages, how much it cost to fill the grocery trolley. And that's why the British people are pretty angry. And fed up with their political leaders. It's just a cycle of rubbish, and they replace rubbish with more rubbish. We're basically the laughing stock of the entire world, as per usual. And now the race to replace Liz Truss is on. The Conservative Party wants to have her successor in place by next week, Friday. And there are reports that Boris Johnson might throw his name back in the ring. Meanwhile, the opposition Labour Party is clamoring for a general election. Polls show that if that were held today, they would win in a landslide. John? Ramey Innocencio in London. Thank you. For more on this, let's bring in Ambassador Robert Holliman. He served as the Deputy U.S. Trade Representative from 2014 to 2017. He's also the CEO of the Crowell and Mooring International Law Firm. Mr. Ambassador, at a meeting of European leaders Thursday in Brussels, French President Emmanuel Macron said he wished for a return to stability in Britain. How destabilizing is all of this for the U.K. in terms of the rest of the world? It's certainly challenging because of uh, the size of the UK economy. Uh, it's the fifth largest economy in the world uh, for the United States. It's a major trading partner. 5% uh, of our trade is US UK trade, but for the UK, the US is even bigger. We're 20% of their total trade. So anything that um, destabilizes or challenges this relationship is problematic. On the other hand, I think that the trade relationship is stronger than any one um, party. It's stronger than any one prime minister. So I expect it to be a bump in the road, but not a significant deterrent in the U.S.-U.K. trade relationship. How much do you think uh, what Prime Minister Truss was dealing with was the result? Obviously, some of it was her idiosyncratic uh, set of circumstances. But others are, you know, interest rates are going up all over uh, the world, certainly Europe. That's why those European leaders are meeting is to deal with the high energy costs. There is labor unrest. How much do you think she suffered from simply trying to find remedies to the same challenges that are bedeviling a whole host of countries? Well, I think there were some self-inflicted wounds along the way in terms of the policies that probably got out too fast. Um, she had a record of working on trade agreements and had been making some progress uh, for the UK in establishing on their own agreements, although most of those were simply picking up on agreements that the EU had already negotiated. But so she had a history in that. But I think she certainly got embroiled in a series of um, largely self-made problems that resulted in what we've seen. 
I think what does it mean for the U.S. and the U.K. going forward? I think we've seen hurdles in the past. I don't see this as destabilizing in any way. Uh, but the jury's still out on who comes next and what it means for the relationship between our two countries. Help me understand if there is any relationship between um, Brexit and the forces that that were behind it, um, and and because. Since you deal with trade so much, trade is often kicked around in these populist moments. How much do you think that the expectations that were created in the Brexit age are still lingering in the UK um, in terms of basically doing something that um, was called for by the public and then ran into the complexities of actually having to um, make it happen and, and uh, well, make it happen? Certainly one of the things that was called out early in the Brexit discussions, and I remember being in London and in the UK right before the vote, um, and how um, um, on one hand surprising that was, but one of the arguments would be that the UK would be able to act on its own, create more favorable trade arrangements, more favorable economic policies for the UK than they had been able to do as part of the EU. I think what we've seen is what the UK has done has largely been to try to replicate yeah. trade agreements that were already in place with the EU. I mean, we have the same trade agreements now in place that we have with the EU, which are very specialized, but they're not special trade agreements. So this is a case where we may have a special agreement between understanding between the US and UK in principle on broader issues, but the UK simply has a normal trade relationship with the US. It's neither less favorable nor favorable than what we have currently with the uh, US, with the EU. So it hasn't given the difference that I think the UK was hoping for in their trade agreements going forward. All right, Ambassador Robert Holliman, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.